My name is Arto Santala and uh, this is Java on Speed. So I'm going to go through some new things in Java fast as possible. The previous attempt took me 40 minutes. Mm, so I'm going to try to improve. Nobody wants to watch a video for 40, 40 minutes. So actually here you should see a button and that allows you to speed up the video. So this might be more amusing for you if you increase the speed for 1.25 or even 1.5 and uh, fun is what this is all about. So let's begin. I'm going to go through some uh, useful and coherent examples on how to use latest version of Java or not. Uh, I'm going to do this very fast so I'm not going to be very coherent. I'm going to muck it up, show you some cool stuff. Hopefully this will be entertaining as it's educating. So let's go. Uh, demo time in the beginning. Then we can do the theory. So I'm going to run Java version 14 uh, with JShell. That's already new stuff in a Docker because Docker allows me to run it without polluting my machine with uh, new uh, stuff. I'm enabling preview because this is cutting edge crap that I'm going to show you. So all that run adopt open JDK. I'm using adopt open JDK build because that just kicks ass. It's open source. It's still get getting all the security patches. So it's a very good platform. That was not paid commercial by the way. So now I have Java 14 environment J shell with preview enabled. I'm able to show you some fun stuff. And first on the list is var. So I can do var a equals one. What just happened in the early days of Java, we would have done it like this. But now we are able to say this because Java is taking a look on the right side and using type inference and then figuring out that no need to repeat yourself on the left side. You can say var, this is a variable. So we can of course use more complex types like this. So let's create a list of strings like that. And you can even do this to surprise your friends. So yes, var is not a reserved keyword. Var var equals two. That's a good trick question. Okay, uh, next thing, some string goodness. We have a string. I'm going to using a new uh, built-in function. I'm going to repeat it 5,000 times chop it to lines to get a stream, map the stream and do a for each. So these have been around for some time, but repeat and lines are new. So nothing useful, just fun stuff, something that's new there that you are able to use. These are tiny, uh, uh, tiny things. They are not revolutionary, but if you take a lot of small evolutionary steps, they will pile up. Let's move onwards. Next thing here is something like this. So we have a list of URL addresses. I'm using a new static, uh, well, static function that will generate me immutable list of strings. So that's cool, but then I'm able to use another new feature. What just happened? So we, uh, we had a stream, we were mapping it, but then we have a switch statement that returns a value. So it's actually switch expression. And we are using this syntax here. So in case of this, return this one. So that's quite something new. Never write code like this. Using switch within a map is evil. But I think you got the point. So we have another bad example with another syntax. Depending on your, your Java version, you have one of these available. So we have a yield bonus points if you remember what the yield used to do and still does originally because it's not a new keyword but in java kind of sense it's now used in new place so you can do case yield something what's the difference well with yield you are actually able to do a block here so you, you can put more statements and then yield something please don't do that if you do that, you are just a bad person. 
I don't know why they did it like this. Uh, it should be burned with holy fire. And then we have pattern matching goodness. So we have an object. If it's a string, let's assign a string to it so we can access all the API that it has. So just a kind of clever, fast way to uh, grab your general object and uh, do a type check and cast with the same same one-liner. Um, it's not as powerful as pattern matching in some other languages, at least not yet, but it's still something. It's a small improvement. In uh, early days of Java, and we still do, uh, when we want to store data, we do an object. So we do a class, we put a field in it, we do it private because it needs to be encapsulated to protect it, even though we typically 99.9999 point of the time we don't protect it. So anybody could call this public mutator function and set, set a new state. We still do the get set dance. We still do the constructors. We still do the two string and we do the equals and hash code dance. Most of you probably just generate this, so you're using some tool or, or you're lomboking it or something like that. Whatever the cool kids are doing these days. I'm not a cool kid, but I'm going to do this. So this is a new feature in Java 14. It's a preview. That's why I enable preview. Uh, this is doing all the same. So I created a record business case with a constructor. Uh, it has the getters and setters. It has the well, kind of. It has a, it has the state within it. Uh, we have uh, immutability. We have equals hash code. We have we have two strings. So we have all that good stuff. It's a little bit different. It's not quite the class. So there's some interpretation and opinionation happening. But as you can see, we can still use it quite like a class. So I think that's very very, very cool stuff. We have the two string here. We have the constructor here. So using the records, we are able to save a lot of code lines. And uh, I don't think it's very important that you save a bit of typing time. But uh, as, as you can just generate these or ju just type the classes as before. But two important points. You're also, when you are saving some code lines and removing boilerplate, you are saving stuff from review from git commit. You are saving stuff from uh, automated testing and security testing and static analysis. So you have less code base. You have less code base to maintain. And I think that's much more important than how, how long it takes to write. So of course, uh, writing the code is not very important. Reading it is the important thing. And I think I would prefer, prefer reading this one. It's much more expressive. Second great thing is that you are documenting your intent. So earlier we just have had classes for pretty much anything. So if you have data, you have a class. If you have uh, uh, business logic methods, functions, you have a class. Um, then you would combine these with the record you are intending to not combine. So this is just data. It's just a record. And you have the function separately somewhere. Now record, uh, you are able to customize it. But first of all, don't. Secondly, don't. And thirdly, if you still want, look it up. I'm not going to go there. So that was a very quick demo. Java started in 1995 when something called Oak became Java. It took 19 years to get to Java 8, which is a very good and popular platform. It only took six years to go from 8 to 15. So we are getting a new version every 1.5 years or more rapidly because now we are getting intermediate uh, uh, releases. So things are picking up and I'm just saying that Java used to be fun stuff. I think there's 20 million software developers in the world who know Java. And once you learned it in 1995, you can just leverage the same and you can say, I know Java. It's not so anymore. So it's getting very rapid and there's new changes. So if you are going to apply for us to work, I'm going to, and if you are saying that you are up to date with Java, so if you say that I know Java 14, well, 
I'm going to ask you some questions on Java 14, because it's not your grandfather's Java anymore. And I think it's a great sin to write Java 1.0 code on Java 14 platform. So please, if you're, if you're listening to this, you're already mildly interested. So please educate yourself more. There's cool stuff that's making life much more fun. Uh, to get Java on your machine, well, I like to pr prefer Brew. So I install versions of Adopt Open JDK, then I put Genv. So I'm able to rapidly swap across different Java versions and it's supporting Maven as well. But most of the time these days I use Docker to isolate the execution environment. And then I'm able to actually scale it up when I need to quite rapidly. And I'm able to experiment with some cutting edge stuff like Java 15 without installing it on my machine. So that's good stuff. Uh, Let's go through some highlights. I showed you already something, but let's see how fast I can do this. So Java 9 main point was the modular everything. It enabled Java to go leaner. You can choose which parts you use. And uh, I think we are pretty far with that, but we, we are still not at the end of that. So I'm hopefully going to do a video on how to do really lean Java microservices in really massive way. Yeah, JShell you saw uh, we have some optional goodness, we have some uh, collection goodness. These are pointing towards functional programming, which is highly popular in our company. And it makes life so much better. You get sunshine and rainbows. And even if you're working remotely in isolation like I am, uh, you can avoid cabin fever by using functional programming principles. So that's very good stuff. We got a G1 garbage collector, which is very good with huge heaps and uh, better with predictability than before. Java 10, var keyword, already shown. More optional, more collection goodness, more functional programming goodness. If you combine all these tiny things, you get a lot of huge things happening. Uh, aware of Docker now, so we are not confusing Docker resources with physical real resources, uh, better garbage collection capabilities, uh, these uh, examples in the material are mainly so because material is av available on SlideShare. So you're able to look these up with uh, more leisure, leisure pace. But I already showed you all this fu fun stuff. Java 11. We get local variable syntax for Lambda parameters. So you're able to define them like this as well. You cannot use this for fields, but you can use it for local variables and la Lambda parameters. You're able to run Java code without compiling it because uh, it's going to happen automatically. And then we have, uh, then we have uh, some API goodness. So I showed you repeat lines, optional is empty file write string, and we have a new garbage collector. Java 12, we got CDS, have to talk a bit more about CDS. We got micro benchmark suite. We get great version of G1 that's able to return unused memory that you have committed, but is not necessary. So you're able to actually go from the max heap, you're able to go towards the minimum heap back. So that's great stuff. And we have one more garbage collector because there's never enough garbage collectors. Class data sharing. Well, first thing, do you have it or not? Check your lib server folder. If you have some stuff there, you, you are using it already. So it's been upgraded across different Java versions. Not going to go into details here. Um, just main point is that the more recent version of Java you have, uh, the better it's going to be. But here is an important picture. So we have operating system level and old versions of Java. You would have, uh, they were kind of designed so that you run one Java at a time. And, uh, and then you would have operating system. And on top of that, you run Java and Java gets its own everything. But now uh, we have been wanting to run more and more versions of Java and start them faster and faster. And then therefore we have some sharing happening. So you cannot uh, share heap or metaspace or co code cache. Uh, these belong still to the process, but you can share some other parts. So we have lib JVM SO, so static compilation of uh, virtual machine libraries. We have the JRA itself. We have uh, class data sharing. 
uh, which is basically metadata about the uh, class data compilation. So it can be op optionally used and even shared across different virtual machine processes. So when you add all that up and the better garbage collectors, you get faster startup time and much better performance. And uh, you get some benefit when you are running a lot of mul multiple virtual machines uh, within the same machine. So I think this is pretty cool stuff. Even if you are not changing your code, even, even if you do naughty Java 1.0 code, you're still going to run it much faster just by updating to latest version of Java. Bumpy ride ahead. If you want to use the new garbage collection algorithms, you have to unlock experimental VM options first then you are able to use a ZGA, uh, GC or Shenandoah. I love Shenandoah because I can pronounce it better. Uh, I haven't been able to go in depth to this enough, but there's great videos in YouTube. So if you are looking for better GC, uh, look up some, some kind of benchmarks across these. I think my, my main point would be that if you need more performance, if you are thinking that your garbage collection sucks. Uh, these are easily available, so just run your application against these and uh, micro benchmark the results so you're able to figure out which one is best for your code. You probably want to do that if you are running your code for a long time, like a server mode, or uh, if, you are, if you are using a lot of very heavy use of memory. So those would be main triggers to use these. Java 13. CDS got better, GCC is able to uncommit unused memory, rewritten legacy socket API, yield keyword with switch expressions to do the switch statement, and text blocks. I have to show this even though we are pressed on time. So var fun 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 equals fun fun fun. Yeah, that's how we roll here. So other languages have been doing that for quite some time already, but finally it got to Java as well. So we are now able to do a multi-line text block delimited by triple quotes. Uh, yeah, if you want to quickly verify latest Java features, you can do this. If this code runs, you, you have turned on compilation and execution for Java uh, 13 at least. For 14, we have some more stuff. I'm not going to go through all these, so just pointing out few few fun stuff. So we need better packaging tools to package the modular the parts of the modular runtime that we need, and all the set settings that we need, and all the static compilations that we need to make it start very fast and share stuff if necessary. Uh, then include the library modules that we want to use, and finally include your own modules that you want to use. And then you have a fun application. So we have seen many iterations of the package tool. Now one more has come with Java 14. Um, we have a helpful null pointer exceptions because everybody hates null pointer exceptions. So now they are actually letting you know a little bit of what is going on there. And we have recourse, which is uh, on preview, but pretty cool preview. So I love recourse. And a lot of deprecation and removal. So I also love that uh, stuff that's not used anymore is going away from Java. And uh, even for more, you have the option of not bringing it along. So that's very good trend because again, we get the faster, leaner, light, more lightweight Java, less um, area for security breaches, etc. So very good stuff coming up. Java 15, not gonna go in depth. I think this might be outdated already. We have a lot of candidates that can be good good stuff to have. So one one more shot at JSON API. JSON API has always sucked in Java, but we are using JSON all the time. So hopefully this will be a little bit better. It shouldn't be that hard. We have Lambda Leftovers, which is fun name, a little, little bit like Project Coin. So tiny improvements to Lambda. Uh, some other kind of technical improvements, sealed types, hidden classes. All of these are on candidates. So, uh, well, they were when I did this slide, might be different this morning already. Java 15 is moving very fast, but candidate means that it might be dropped even before uh, uh, the release. And remember that 15 is quite intermediate release, so it's gonna be small, fast, 
just some new stuff that you can play with and see which if it's useful or not. Read more if you got interested on this. The presentation is available in SlideShare. Uh, there's a lot of good links you can Google. Once you know the main keywords, what you're looking for, it's easy to find more in-depth stuff. As I mentioned, don't let your friends write Java 1.0 code on Java 14. That's ugly. That's evil. So educate yourself. Be up to date. I myself try to uh, push myself to using a bit more on these new features until they become boring. That's a good, good way to learn them. So I, I use them even in places where they would not offer advantage unless it's uh, really production code that needs to be understood by everybody. So in that case, of course, trim it down to suitable level that's, uh, uh, that you have kind of set to on your, on your team. Uh, thanks for listening this uh, little bit uh, of a retrospective on what's up with Java. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully you were entertained a little bit. I'm sure you were if you put that speed to 1.5. And uh, I want to promote a little bit. We have this Dev Solita FI blog here. So it's filled with technical articles, a lot of goodness there going. So we have articles on records and modularity and, and uh, how to survive the transition from early Java to more recent Java. There's even some stuff on how to how to use modern languages like Rust or Go, uh, some security, cy cyber stuff co coming up. So it's a great place to be, visit there. We have all also put more emphasis this year to produce more content there. So it, it should feel more alive now. And uh, also say, stay tuned because I would expect more videos to come up. Uh, if we survive this one, more will happen. Uh, give some feedback, let us know if this was good, bad, ugly, uh, if there's some improvements that we could take, let us know. This is a kind of new area uh, doing a video on, on this technical stuff. Thank you.